Hi there, this is Mahesh here and welcome to the Celestial Quest. Today I'm going to talk about constellations of stars or nakshatras in Vedic astrology. So what are the nakshatras? Let's take a look. If you have watched my video on zodiac signs and rashis in Vedic astrology, then you are familiar with what I'm showing you on the screen. But if you have not, then don't worry, as I will quickly go through that again. Before we can talk about the nakshatras and the zodiac, we need to understand the concept of ecliptic. The Sanskrit word for the ecliptic is apamandala. The imaginary plane containing the Earth's orbit around the Sun, shown with orange circle, is called the ecliptic plane. The Sun's apparent path through the sky lies in this plane and is called ecliptic, as pointed out in the diagram. We all know that it is the Earth that revolves around the Sun and takes about 365 days to complete one full rotation. But from the Earth, it feels as if the Sun is traversing this path over the course of the year. And hence, we call it Sun's apparent path. Okay, let's now try to understand what the zodiac is. The zodiac, or Bha Chakra in Sanskrit, is an area of the heavens that extends about 9 degrees above and 9 degrees below the ecliptic, which, is, um, which I'm showing you on the screen. Zodiac looks like a band or belt around the ecliptic and is a circle of 360 degrees. For those who are curious, I will talk about why this zodiac belt is 18 degrees wide in a separate video. Let's understand what the nakshatras are now. Many constellations of stars appear on this imaginary belt. In Vedic astrology, this zodiac belt is marked by 27 constellations of stars called nakshatras or lunar mansions, each covering 13 degrees and 20 minutes of longitude. See the screen. 27 nakshatras together make up 360 degrees of the zodiac circle. In astrology and astronomy, each degree is divided into 60 minutes and each minute into 60 seconds. The first nakshatra starts at 0 degrees and finishes at 13 degrees 20 minutes. The second nakshatra starts at 13 degrees 20 minutes and finishes at 26 degrees and 40 minutes. The third one starts at 26 degrees 40 minutes and finishes at 40 degrees and so on. Likewise, the 27th nakshatra starts at 346 degrees 40 minutes and finishes at 360 degrees, which is the end of the zodiac. This same zodiac is also divided into 12 equal parts of 30 degrees each called zodiac signs or Rashis and I have explained it in a separate video about Rashis in, the, in Vedic astrology that I mentioned in the beginning. Now why the zodiac belt is marked with 27 constellations of stars or nakshatras and not any other number? Let's try to understand. The division of the zodiac into 27 parts is based on moon's movement. The moon takes 27 days, 7 hours and 43 minutes to go around the earth. Rounding this off, we get 27 days. This is called the sidereal month. Moon covers 13 degrees 20 minutes per day during the sidereal month. Note that this is not the same as synodical month of full moon to full moon or new moon to new moon of 30 days that we talked about in the Rashi's video. Okay, so if we divide the zodiac of 360 degrees by 13 degrees 20 minutes, that is the longitudinal distance that moon covers per day during the sidereal month, then we get 27 divisions. And this is the reason we divide the zodiac into 27 constellations of stars called nakshatras by giving the importance to the moon, like we did by giving importance to the sun in case of Rashi division in Vedic astrology. These are also called lunar mansions as the moon stays in one nakshatra every day, thus kind of taking the ownership of one nakshatra every day before moving on to the next one. There is an interesting story about this in Hindu mythology that these are 27 wives of the moon and every day moon visits one wife. So over the course of 27 days he visits all of them. Okay. There's one other thing that you need to be aware of about the zodiacs and that there are two zodiacs in use. One called tropical zodiac or by its Sanskrit name Sayana and the other called sidereal zodiac or Nirayana. 
In Western astrology, some astrologers consider tropical or Sina zodiac, also known as moving zodiac, for the predictions, where the position of the starting point of the zodiac is fixed with reference to the vernal equinox, which is the intersection of the ecliptic with the celestial equator. Whereas sidereal or Narayana zodiac, also known as fixed zodiac, is used in Vedic astrology as well as by many of the Western astrologers, where the starting point of the zodiac is fixed using fixed star. Apparently in the past, the starting points of these two zodiacs coincided. But as the vernal equinox point precesses or moves westward at the rate of about 51 seconds per year with respect to fixed stars, this has caused the starting points of the two zodiacs to drift away from each other over the years. And currently the starting points of these two zodiacs stand apart from each other by about 24 degrees longitudinally. I will talk about the tropical and sidereal zodiac in more detail in a separate video. Let's now take a look at nakshatras on the zodiac circle. The 27 nakshatras in a fixed order are as follows. Ashwini, Bharini, Kritika, Rohini, Mrigashira, Ardra, Punarvasu, Pusha, Ashlesha, Magha, Purva Falguni, Uttar Falguni, Hasta, Chitra, Swati, Vishakha, Anuradha, Jeshtha, Mula, Purvashada, Uttarashada, Shravana, Dhanishtha, Shatabhisha, Purvabhadra, Uttar Bhadra and Revati. As mentioned earlier, please remember that order of these nakshatras is fixed. That is, Ashwini is always the first nakshatra. Bharini will always come after Ashwini and Kritika will be the next nakshatra until we reach Revati, which is the 27th or the last nakshatra. Each nakshatra is further divided into four quarters called Padas in Sanskrit as shown on the screen. Each pada is 3 degrees and 20 minutes of the zodiac arc longitudinally. So the whole zodiac consists of 108 padas in total which covers 360 degrees longitudinally. It is important to note that the starting point of the first nakshatra which is Ashwini always coincides with the starting point of the first zodiac sign which is Aries or Mesha. Interesting, isn't it? The table on this next screen shows the names of the first nine nakshatras and the degrees of these nakshatras longitudinally. For example, first nakshatra Ashwini starts at 0 degrees and finishes at 13 degrees 20 minutes. And the second nakshatra Bharini starts at 13 degrees 20 minutes and finishes at 26 degrees 40 minutes. The table on this next screen shows the names of the next nine nakshatras and their degrees. For example, the 10th nakshatra Magha starts at 120 degrees and finishes at 133 degrees 20 minutes. And finally, this last table shows the name of the 9 nakshatras and their degrees. The 27th nakshatra Revati starts at 346 degrees 40 minutes and finishes at 360 degrees, which is the end of the zodiac. Each nakshatra in Vedic astrology has its own specific qualities attributed to it by ancient sages, most likely after a very thorough research. I will discuss these qualities of each of these nakshatras in a separate video series. Ok guys, this was my take on the nakshatras. I hope you found it interesting. Bye for now until I return with another video on Vedic astrology. And thank you for watching.